Welcome. This is question number 13 on the 10 ready or TCAP, whatever, practice test for integrated math 2. There we are in subpart number 2, which means calculators are allowed. Won't really need one here much, I don't think. Well, maybe for a little bit of subtraction. Calvin purchases a piece of heavy machinery for $32,300. The value of the machine depreciates. That's a big term here. Depreciates means it goes down in value, obviously. Some things depreciate much faster than others. If you drive a boat off the lot, they say it loses half its value. That's not really true, but you do lose a lot of value in that first few years. But they're going to set a standard annual rate of 8.3%. Which function represents the value of the machine with an appropriate equivalent monthly depreciation rate? Now, this is an exponential function because it's a percentage. You're multiplying whatever your current value is by 8.3%, every time that you do it. In fact, you're doing it plus itself, but we'll get to that in a second. But the fact is I'm multiplying something by 8.3% um, every time that I do it. The actual raw value of 8.3% of something changes depending on its current value. So when I multiply 32,300 by 8.3%, which is 0.083, move the decimal points over a couple and you get there. Um, that doesn't give me a value that is meaningful on its own. So that would be $2,680.90. Now what does this represent? It represents the value that you delete from this. So I'm going to do this minus this to get to my next value. Um, and then I'm going to take 8.3% of that value and so on and so forth. The problem is if I just choose to handle things that way, the number will get extremely small quickly. This is just the value that I lost. This isn't the value that's left over, which is what you want to know. You want to know what the value of the machine is uh, after a certain number of months or whatever it happens to be. Now, uh, I don't want it to go down to $2,680.90 as the total after you know one year of doing it. That doesn't make any sense. So instead, I need to address the fact that not only and I'm go am I going to multiply the number by itself, because I have to have a starting point, and then I'm going to subtract this much. So say I have 32,300 minus 2,680.90. So I need to figure out a way to, in a multiply sense, make that happen. So if I just multiply this number by itself, I get this. And then if I multiply this by 0.083 or 8.3%, um, I get, I guess I should have done that in a different color, that would have made more of a visual point. If I multiply by this, I get this part. Remember it's subtraction, so instead of doing the subtraction in two steps, I'm just going to do it all at once. So I end up with that. That's what it would be. Uh, so this shows me what would happen if it depreciated 8.3% uh, per year, and I'm only going to do it one time. I'm not going to do it multiple times. So let's go back and clear all that out, and I'll set that up as I had it. So I want to start out with 32,300. I want to multiply it by itself and subtract 8.3%. Once again, that's if I'm doing it only one time a year, I'm applying that depreciation. They want to know what the monthly depreciation rate is, or what the value is. So I need to go in and adjust, or which function represents the value of the machine with a monthly depreciation rate. Monthly depreciation rate means that I need to break that 8.3%, which is an annual rate, into 12 parts. So I'm going to say 0 0.083 divided by 12. Now that will break it out into parts. Why would I do that? I mean, I want to look at it per year, right? But that means that I apply this smaller percentage of depreciation 12 times more often. So I do 12 times the value. If I was doing it in one year, it would look like this. Like if I was only doing the annual value. and then each year I would apply it over and over again. That's for once a year. Or yearly, I guess, would be a better way to say it. 
That's if I was applying that depreciation yearly. They want me to uh, apply it monthly. So I need to take the annual rate, break it out into a smaller percentage, so it'll uh, be broken into 8.3% divided by 12. But if I do break it into 12 parts, I need to apply it. It applies that smaller percentage 12 times more often, because each month you're depreciating the value of the heavy machinery, which is a pretty common way to do things if you're allowed to by the law. So the only thing I really need to do now is just make an adjustment for this part inside the parentheses because you'll notice that they have it all in this form. So I need to do what 1 minus let's see if I can bring up the old calculator here. There's that. But then I realized looking kind of half looking at it they do it this really weird thing which I hate. I'd rather see it done this way because it's that's kind of how it works. But they want you to not worry about this part and they just want you to do 1 minus 0 0.083 and they're going to apply that 1 with an 1 out of 12 times, so an exponent of 1 12th, which is really weird, 12t. But this is 0 0.917 The doing it up 12 times will get you to 1, so that's where that 1 twelfth comes from. But they're just not making this adjustment instead. And then you do it times 12 t. So I didn't really need the calculator. I brought it up because, I mean, the math's still there. If you do it, it ends up being something like, uh, if you do this, it ends up being something like 0.933. So it still will give you a general idea where it's going. But they use this style of explanation, and that's fine, I guess. So there you go. It has all the parts that it needs. The fact that it's less than one shows that it's a depreciation because if you multiply it by a percentage smaller than one, it's like multiplying by a fraction less than one. The number, the value of the number is going to go down. This one over 12 represents the fact that each month I'm going to apply this smaller uh, percentage. So the one twelfth actually brings down the value that it applies of the annual percentage into 12 parts so it's no longer doing it this way. And the 12t means that you need to apply this smaller amount of depreciation 12 times more often than you would if you're doing annual depreciation. So that's it. This part represents how often you apply the depreciation or, or appreciation that increases in size. This number, whether it's here or here, tells you whether its value is going up or down. And this number essentially represents how often or how uh, many parts you're going to break the percent change into. Now the thing is once you run this one time it will tell you what the value is of the heavy machinery after one month. The second time it'll tell you what it is after two months but the reality is once you apply this the first time for the first month you're going to apply the 8.3 divided by 12 percent to that new value which is why it would be an exponential value or an exponential graph as opposed to linear because the amount it goes down is not the same over and over and over again. So that's the difference between linear and exponential. Somewhat long explanation for all the parts but I just want to make you know where of where all those things were coming from.